be um, going through the semester. Ooh, can you guys hear that? I don't think we need music. How do I turn it off? There it is. You can't hear the music? Let's see. Oh, you can't see the video either, can you? Here it is. Okay. Um, hold on. Something covered here. Okay. So this is just a cool video of a pond sample. So this would be something similar to what you might do if you were in a real lab. You might take a pond sample from somewhere on campus, put it on a slide and look at it under the microscope, and then get to see all of the cool little living things that are inside that pond sample that you found. So here are some uh, little green cells. These are probably algae, which um, are what we call photosynthetic eukaryotes. And you can see how they're vibrating around. Uh, you can see this cell here. There's another little guy swimming, but he's not green, so he's probably not photosynthetic. He's what we call a heterotroph. He does his own food. This big cell right here, look at those compartments. Based on that, can you, just, can you guess what kind of cell that might be? Do you think it's prokaryote or eukaryote? Okay, so it was eukaryote, right? Let me get, stop this. Okay, so I'm gonna go smaller now. How do I get out of here? Okay, so we saw lots of different kinds of cells. So if you see um, a cell that has internal compartments, and you can see that in all of these pictures, then you're gonna know for sure that the cell is a eukaryote, right? Because eukaryotes are the only ones that have those internal compartments. Sometimes you might see a nucleus, Sometimes you might see uh, other organelles, which we're gonna talk about in a second, like here's a little red organelle, right? These ones look red, not green. And when we look at it, we can tell whether or not it's photosynthetic or not based on its color. So these ones are green because they do photosynthesis, just like a plant is green and does photosynthesis. These ones that don't have any color, um, are not green because they don't do photosynthesis and so therefore they are in the category of being a heterotroph. Now this one is tricky. It's red, it's not green. But have you ever seen a red plant? Right, a tree like a crepe myrtle or something that has uh, red leaves, right? So this is actually a photosynthetic cell but it's just not, uh, it uses a different kind of pigment. Now when we are looking at cells, um, like we just did in that pond sample, you would, you would classify the cells or, or categorize them based on a, a variety of things. First, the shape. So they have, you know, we saw that one that was like a nice rectangle with those circles on the inside. That's a very distinctive shape. There were some that were perfect little circles. And then that one that was swimming around that was, didn't have any color, he was kind of a blob, right? He was kind of blobby shaped. So shape tells us something. Uh, color tells us something. If it's green, we know it does photosynthesis. If it's not green, I should say that differently. If it's green, we can make the assumption it does photosynthesis, we don't know for sure. If it's not green, we can make the assumption that it likely doesn't do photosynthesis, right? And so we would have to test further to test for sure. Um, how it moves. So some cells, if we go back a slide, some cells have little hair-like structures like this that help it move, those are called cilia. Other cells have real long tails like this, to help it move, those are called flagella. Some cells don't have any tails at all and they just blob around, right? Like an amoeba. So the mode of motility, the way it moves, can help us distinguish what kind of cell to classify it as, whether or not it has a cell wall. So I told you that some cells do, some cells don't, so that helps us. Uh, we talked about photosynthetic versus non-photosynthetic, so that kind of goes with color. Size, we talked about that. So let's see if you guys remember. What would be the size range for a eukaryotic cell? So in that pond sample, if, if I measured one of those cells that had an internal compartment, what might be the range which, within which the size would fall? Good, 10 to 100 micrometers. Now, that's just the normal range. Think about a chicken egg, right? A chicken egg's way bigger than 100 microliters, and that's, or a micrometer, sorry. That's a eukaryotic cell. Right, so they can be way bigger, but for the most part, they're, they're that size. And then of course, we could classify them as being prokaryote and eukaryote. 
So looking at this cell picture right here, it's blobby shaped, doesn't have much of a color. We can't see it moving. We don't really know if it has a cell wall. It doesn't look green, so we're probably gonna put it in the category of possibly being non-photosynthetic. It's pretty big, and then it has this little circle on the inside. So would we classify this as a prokaryote or a eukaryote? Eukaryote, what was your evidence? Right, that membrane bound compartment right there, does anyone know what that particular compartment likely is? The nucleus, that's right, good job. And does anyone have want to take a guess what kind of cells these are? Anybody know that they may have looked at cells like this under the microscope before? So these are human cells. They're, they're cheek cells. And actually, to be honest with you, I think this is a picture I took of my own cheek cells. I think these are my cheek cells, right? So I took a, a toothpick and I just rubbed it on the inside of my cell and I, I mean, inside of my cheek and I just rubbed the toothpick on a slide and I plop the slide down on the microscope, and there you go, those were what my cheek cells look like. So pretty cool, right? So that's just proof that we as humans are eukaryotic, because I just put those cells on there and you can see that internal compartmentalization. All right, um, so this is just another picture of a cell. You can see here the outline of the cell. Here's the nucleus, right? So this is my cell membrane, that's my nucleus. This is a picture of a plant cell. And I want to show you a cool video. So the structures here, you can't really see the, well, here you can see a nucleus. Everybody see that? Here's a nucleus. But mostly what you see are these little green structures. So they're a different organelle, right? So first of all, would we classify this as prokaryote or eukaryote? These green cells, right? The, the cell is this whole big thing. Okay, we would say it's eukaryote because it has these compartments. We can see a nucleus here. We can see these other little compartments. Does anybody know what these other little compartments are called? It's okay if you don't, we're gonna get there. Chloroplasts, that's right. And they're green. Do you think we would say these cells are photosynthetic or non-photosynthetic? Likely. Right, we can't say for sure, but right, because they're green, we're probably gonna say that they're photosynthetic. So I wanna show you this video because it just, this is something you would see under the microscope if you were to getting a chance to actually do this. So you can see here, this is the out, oops, you can't see my video. Can you see it now? Can you see my video? Okay, Let's see if I can make it bigger. Oops, wrong way. Okay, so, oops, too big. Okay. So can you see here, this is the outline of the cell. So that's my plasma membrane. Now this is a plant cell, so it has a cell wall around it too, so that's why it looks so thick. And then this kind of white pan space, that's my cytoplasm. In this particular cell, ooh, look, you can see the nucleus. Everybody see that round right there? And then these little guys are the chloroplasts. And there's lots and lots of chloroplasts in plant cells, which is what make plants look so green, because it's the number of chloroplasts that they have. And inside of these chloroplasts is where photosynthesis is happening. All right, now the cytoplasm is not stagnant. It's moving, just like the air in our room is blowing around, the cytoplasm is moving too. So you can actually see that movement. Oops, I wanna go back and see it again. You can see that the, how the, when the cytoplasm moves around, and we'll talk a little bit later about what might cause that cytoplasm to be moving, um, the, the chloroplasts get moved along with it which is kind of fun. Okay, so that might be something you might have seen if we were in the lab and actually looking at cells, but we can just look at them here, right? We can just see videos. Okay, so any questions on um, what the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes? Because now what we're gonna do is we are going to just use this little interactive thing. I'm gonna give you the website for this so you can go do it um, on your own. I'm not gonna give you the website. All you gotta do is type in cells, alive in Google, okay? And it's gonna bring you to this um, cool website, if it's gonna maybe do it for me, here it is. All right, so you would type in cells alive, and we're gonna first look at an animal cell, okay? 
So you can see that it looks pretty, pretty well complicated and organized on the inside with all of these different compartments. Everybody see that? Let me see if I can make it bigger. Okay, and when you scroll around, you can actually see the names of some of these compartments. Now, we are gonna do a whole um, chapter on cells and cell parts, but I kinda wanna just kinda throw some of the names of the parts out there so that you are aware, because it, it just happens to come up in conversation a lot when we're talking about cells, so it's better to have an idea. So this big blue thing right here, that's the nucleus, right? That's where the DNA is housed. So if we click on the name down here, when you go there, it actually tells you about that particular structure. So the nucleus is typically the biggest organelle in the, in the eukaryotic cell, and that is where the DNA resides. So anything that has to do with the DNA starts its processing in this nucleus structure. Okay, let's see, how do I go back? Okay. So that's our nucleus. Now next to the nucleus, you see this kind of um, squiggly back and forth yellowy structure in this picture. That's called the endoplasmic reticulum. And these little dots that are all over it, that's called, those are the ribosomes. Now what did I tell you ribosomes do? You guys remember what do ribosomes do? Right, they make protein. So based on the fact that ribosomes are stuck all over them, you probably make a guess as to what the endoplasmic reticulum does, but basically the proteins are gonna get made along these ribosomes and then they're gonna get squirted inside the endoplasmic reticulum for further processing. So proteins have to fold and sometimes they get modified. And so they go inside the endoplasmic reticulum for that reason. Excellent. There's another little yellowy structure that doesn't have dots all over it. It's called the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and that's where we'll find that lipids get um, function. Okay, we're going to just skip over some of these. You can totally go to this interactive cells alive thing and play with it yourself. This one here, um, often shaped like a kidney bean, kind of has a squiggly pattern on the inside. That's called the mitochondria. Does anybody know what the mitochondria does? Before I click on it. Right, it has something to do with converting sugars, for example, into ATP, right? And so that's super important. That allows these, um, because cells, um, eukaryotic cells can have multiple mitochondria, that allows cells to be very efficient, they have the energy they need to get the job done. All right, over here we have one that looks kind of, kind of like these other endoplasmic reticulum structures, but a little bit different because they have these little, death, these little bubbles that bubble off of them. This is called the Golgi. Uh, the Golgi is uh, basically like a post office. So when things need to be sorted throughout the cell, they get sorted through the post office, through this Golgi. And they use these little structures called vesicles to transport those, um, those things around the cell. And then the last one I want to look at, let's see, let's do this one that last, a lysosome. A lysosome is like the recycling center of the cell. So waste products, old things, broken things, they go into the lysosome and the lysosome like chop, 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 breaks it up into billions of little pieces and then gives those pieces back out to the cell so they can reuse them. Just like you put paper into the recycling bin, it goes somewhere, it gets chop, 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 chop. They take the material from paper, they somehow figure out how to put it back together and they make new paper from it, right? The same thing goes on with the lysosome. All right, so those are some of the major um, organelles that you find in an animal cell. Plant cells have all of the same, so you still see the nucleus, you see the ER, you see the smooth ER, you see a lysosome, you see mitochondria, you see Golgi. But in addition, plant cells have two other really big organelles that make them unique. First of all, they have this, it's called a vacuole. It looks like a huge lake or swimming pool in the middle of the cell. Basically, it helps the cell keep its shape. Notice the shape of the cell is very rectangular, very geometric looking. So the, uh, not only does the cell wall help that, but so does the vacuole. It stores lots of water. So it is like basically like a big water balloon inside. 
okay? And if you were to shrink the size of this vacuum, the cell would kind of shrink a little bit in size. So it helps maintain its shape. But the one that I really want to point out today, because we've already talked about it, are these, right? These are the chloroplasts. So remind me what happens inside the chloroplast. Somebody, did I lose you all? Can you hear me? Okay, <laughs> photosynthesis, that's right. And we just saw that amazing um, video where the, the chloroplasts were all kind of moving around inside the cell, right? Because the cytoplasm was moving. And Sarah, you're exactly right. What's happening inside those chloroplasts is photosynthesis, which is the process that Photosynthetic cells, and remember, photosynthetic cells can be bacteria, they can be algae, they can be plants. So there's lots of different kinds of photosynthetic cells, but what they do is they take sunlight energy and they turn it into sugars, right? And then we, as consumers, eat that sugar to power our cells to do work. Okay, fun. So that was just a little fun um, introduction, because normally I would be drawing this all on the board, and I thought, how am I going to draw it on the board? So this was just a fun way to do it. Go ahead and go to cellsalive.com and play around with this. We'll look at the one from um, bacteria next week when we get to our bacteria. Okay, so let's answer this question real quick. We talked about organelles. First of all, let's say, what are they? Well, if you had to define an organelle, what would you call it? Go ahead and type your answer in, in chat or speak up if you want to. What would you say the definition of an organelle is? Anybody? Good. Okay, things inside the cell, good. What kind of things? They're compartments, right? They're like little organs and they all have a different function, right? And what was the important part of them? They had to be membrane bound. That's really, really important that they're membrane bound, right? Because remember the bacteria cells had ribosomes which seem like little structures, but they didn't have a membrane around them. So that's the important piece, is that they are membrane bound. And what kind of cells have organelles? Only eukaryotes. So let's answer this question. True or false, all eukaryotic cells have an organelle. I mean, I'm sorry, all eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. True, right. True or false, all eukaryotic cells have a cell wall. False, great, because animal cells do not. All right, how about true or false? Uh, the DNA in a bacteria cell is in the nucleus. False again, because why? Because DNA, I mean, I'm sorry, because bacteria don't have a nucleus. They have DNA, but it's not in the nucleus, it's just floating in the cytoplasm. Okay, great, excellent. I wanna make sure you're thinking about that. And then one of the cool things about organelles is it allows these cells to be bigger. So remember when we talked about the cell size difference between the prokaryote and the eukaryote? They're way bigger. And this is what allows the cell to be bigger because we have all of these little compartments each doing their own thing. So it's, it's more efficient. Uh, resources are used more efficiently and so therefore the cell can be bigger. Okay, good question. Are ribosomes membrane bound or are they just blobs? So I'm gonna let you guys answer this question. So what kinds of cells have ribosomes? All, okay. And what kinds of cells have organelles? Only eukaryotes. And are all organelles membrane bound? At least the ones that we're talking about. Yeah. Yes. So to answer your question, are ribosomes membrane bound? No, they're not. They do not have a membrane around. They are blobs of protein and some RNA. So yes, they are just kind of blobs <laughs> that just float around. Okay, great job, guys. Great questions too. I'm I'm, I'm very impressed. All right, so let's look at this. I'm gonna to point to a structure and you guys are gonna to try to tell me what it is, okay? 
So let's start with these little red circles. What do you think that little red circle is right there? We do this one. Good job, ribosomes. And what again do ribosomes do? They make proteins, excellent. All right, what about this pink structure right here? What do you think that is? Golgi, good, 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 good. And what does the Golgi serve as? What's it do in the cell? Uh-huh, transports and stuff like the post office. It just distributes stuff, excellent answers. All right, what about um, this blue structure right around the edge here of the cell? Plasma membrane, okay. So do you think this is an animal cell or a plant cell? Animal, because it doesn't have a cell wall and it's pretty blobby. Animal cells are pretty blobby. They don't have a very distinctive shape. Oh, they, they can, but typically they're blobby. Okay, what about this structure right here that's blue with red dots on it? Okay, what kind of ER? Is that the smooth or the rough? The rough. And we know that the ribosomes are making the proteins. What's going on inside the rough ER? What's happening to the proteins inside the rough ER? So they're made and then they're squirted inside the rough ER and then what happens to them? Anybody remember? Yeah, they get folded and modified. That's exactly right. Okay, what is this purple thing? That's right, that's the nucleus. So what do you think this um, blue stringy stuff in here is? That's the DNA, exactly. And if I were to pull that DNA out and lay it out on the table, would it be like a pen or like a hairband? I used to have a hairband in here and I don't anymore. It would be like a pen, it would be linear in shape, right? Perfect. Um, what do you think this blue thing is right here? It could be a vacuole, could be a lysosome. If it were a lysosome, what would its job be? Oh, right, great, to take care of the waste, to recycle, to break things down, to clean up. What great answers, you guys are awesome. All right, how about this orange thing right here? What's that? All right, good, and what does that structure do? Make ATP, okay, true or false? All eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. Okay, true or false, all eukaryotic cells have a mitochondria. So does that mean plant cells have mitochondria? Most of you said true. The answer is yes, of course plant cells have mitochondria. They have to have ATP too. So it is true, all cells, all eukaryotic cells have a mitochondria, even plant cells. Plant cells have both. They have both the mitochondria and this. What's this thing? What's this green thing right here? Nope, not cytoplasm. Other C word. Chloroplast, that's right. And I know these words all kind of start to sound alike. So really great idea to kind of make some note cards or something so you get them straight in your head. And what does the chloroplast do? What's its function? That's right, photosynthesis, back to photosynthesis. So what's really cool about a plant cell is it has a chloroplast, it takes the sunlight energy in and makes sugars, and then those sugars go directly to the neighboring mitochondria and are used to make ATP to power the cell. So it, it, it uses its own sugars right within its own, and then the excess is what gets put into a apple, right? It's pretty cool, right? So hopefully we can, um, identify these other structures pretty quickly. I'm gonna point, you guys type, pink. Good, good, and remember that's our post office, our transporter. What's this one? Purple. 
Good, good, good. Nucleus and our, we have our DNA in there and it would be linear. What about this red polka dotted blue thing? Good, that's where we're gonna fold the protein. Ooh, I didn't ask this in the other one. What about this non-red polka dotted blue thing? What's that? That's the smoothie R and we didn't really talk about what it does. It has something to do with lipids. We'll talk about that later. Uh, what are these red dots? Okay, great. Um, what's this big swimming pool looking like thing? That's the vacuole and the plant cells have a really big one. It's called a central vacuole, it's big. Okay, so you can use color. I'm gonna say a couple things and you're gonna tell me uh, what color compartment it works in. So remember we had, this is orange, red, pink, purple, blue with dots, blue without dots. Oh. Uh, we'll call this, I guess that's not really purple. Well, I'll point to that one if I wanted to do that one. Okay, so where would I make sugars? Just tell me the color of the, of the, or you can tell me the name of the organelle. Green, right, the chloroplast, excellent. Where would I package stuff up into a vesicle and send it away in the cell? Good, the Golgi, so you're finding it, excellent. Um, where would I um, synthesize lipids? Blue without dots, smoothie are perfect, you guys are doing great. Where would I make proteins? Good, the red dots, the ribosomes, excellent. Where would I make a copy of the DNA? in the nucleus or the purpley pink thing in the middle here, right? This one right here. All right, and then what would I do in this structure right here what, if we think we know what it is? What do you think that one is? Yeah, that's our lysosome. That's where we're gonna dissolve and recycle. Excellent, you guys are awesome. All right, so that was our first um, look at cells. We're gonna study cells kind of all semester. So you already are kind of way ahead of the game because you know some of the parts and some of the differences. Oh, I forgot one question. What's this? What's this green right here? That's the cell wall. The cell membrane is this, this little dark green thing right here, right? So that's a cell wall. Good job. Okay, so we're, we're gonna be looking at cells all semester and, and really what you kind of wanna know are the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, so size, structures, and then within eukaryotes, what do each of those structures do, just in general, and some of them will talk way more in detail than others in terms of what they do. Excellent. Okay, the next part of today's lesson is on microscopy, which is a little tricky because we don't have microscopes to actually look through. So we're gonna talk through it a little bit, and then in your lesson, if you haven't already done it for the week, there's a really cool uh, simulation that you can use to kind of pretend that you have a microscope in front of you and you get to use it. One thing I can promise you is first of all, everybody in the world isn't using microscopes this semester, <laughs> right? They're all virtual. And so um, you will get caught up. Um, the next biology class you take will have you using a microscope. And if you pay attention to what we talk about today, you'll have a little foundation. If you do the simulation, you'll have a little sense of what there is to do. And at some point, I promise, in your biology career, you will have an opportunity to pull out a microscope and actually do what you're learning to do this semester. So it's not like you never are gonna get there. You're gonna get there. Um, and in some of your cases, you might sit in front of a microscope for years after this, right? So it's, don't panic and don't think, oh, I'm missing out. First of all, hardly anybody's probably using a microscope this semester especially because they don't want to be sharing them between students, um, even if they were in person. But um, you will get your chance. And I absolutely promise that at some point, if you maintain being a biology major, you're going to get your chance. Okay, so what a microscope does is helps us see things we can't see with our naked eye. So if you look here, like we can see a human, we can see some really long cells we can actually see. We can see a chicken egg cell. Uh, we can actually see frog eggs. They're pretty little, but we can see them. But most cells, 
that are in these two yellow categories right here, we just can't see with our naked eye. See right here, our naked eye ends and we can't see. So we utilize what are called light microscopes to help us see those. So all those images that I showed you of the cytoplasmic streaming and the pun stuff, right? Uh, the cheek cells, those were all under a light microscope. Now, we're gonna talk about light microscopes today. There are even more powerful microscopes called electron microscopes that help us see really, really small things like a ribosome. So think about how small a ribosome must be that if this is a cell, the ribosome is this little teeny dot inside the cell, right? So it's way smaller than a cell. And remember, it's a little teeny dot inside a bacteria cell too, which we know is really small. Can you guys still hear me? I just heard a beep in my ear. Can you text yes? Okay. So, um, so these electron microscopes help us to hear, I mean, to see things that are really small, like ribosomes, or maybe even individual proteins or even smaller molecules, okay? Now, when we get to atoms, which we'll talk about soon, uh, that's pretty small, we're not seeing that anymore. We're not seeing that with a microscope, okay? So again, remember your sizes? Does this fit with what we talked about? Because animal and plant cells are what kind of cells? Can you all still hear me? Okay, you carry it. So does that fit the range we talked about, 10 to 100? Oh, absolutely, right? And then we talked about most bacteria being kind of right here between one and, and 10, right? So we're right there under 10. Notice, I told you that a nucleus is kind of big. It's the big thing you see in the middle of a cell. A lot of times a nucleus is actually bigger than a bacteria. Isn't that kind of crazy? <laughs> 